um, uh, flows, at what uh, stage do you have to engage with your customers proactively to uh, uh, to uh, love your product or use your product in a better way, in such a way that uh, they don't uh, churn. Content marketing, uh, we talked a, a lot about it already in the sense of uh, uh, acquiring uh, customers, uh, getting traffic. Um, but I think if you uh, take in consider the total amount of uh, time you will spend or your team will spend on content creation, I think about uh, well, 40 to 60% will be on uh, content for customers or that support uh, customers who already bought your product. So we're going to talk about that today. Also, legal, Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. Uh, important today, if you don't have, an, uh, have, an, uh, have, a, have a, a separate tool for managing uh, customer success in place, then all your intelligence of uh, your app usage or your product usage uh, will come from Google Analytics or a similar tool like a PWIC Pro, but Google Analytics is about 99% uh, of the market. So that's why I mentioned them. But so um, think about that also in that sense, not only acquisition, but also especially product usage. SEO, on-page, off-page, link building, building authority and uh, content. App marketing, we talked about landing page optimizations, reviews, um, value proposition, uh, clear call to action, and uh, copy can be a real uh, game changer. We talked about trials in uh, the SaaS business, uh, 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 often used uh, way uh, to get uh, leads in. Um, but for you, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very important to uh, get them on the phone ASAP so you, they can uh, get to know you. They know there's a real business behind it, etc. And you know their uh, core problems. And then you can help them uh, point out your product solution to their core problems. And else they have to find it on their own. So um, social media is really, really big in uh, in. Uh, so inspiration and the brand awareness and uh, first steps in the total uh, journey. So in Google Analytics, mostly it will be a small traffic source, um, but your standard uh, configuration in Google Analytics will be last click attribution. Well, if you use other uh, attribution models who you can configure through Google Analytics, you'll see that social media mostly gets a more important role or has at least one touch point or more in the customer journey, especially for content promotion and content distribution. Lead nurturing, uh, giving points to your uh, content. And um, this is for uh, an 18 month uh, 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 cycle. And the 18 months is very long, but if you're, uh, for example, uh, have software for airplane companies or uh, governments, then this will be your, uh, your cycle because you have to think about their budget periods and they can uh, 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 encompass uh, 12 months or more. Um, but when they engage with you, you give them each engagement uh, value points. In the same system as lead nurturing and acquisition phase, you can uh, copy that to your uh, product slash um, uh, content for uh, existing customer or existing users actually um, or at which stage they are have have they activated this feature uh, have they put in uh, uh, that integration etc so you giving points to where they are um, using where uh, using your product so we're going to talk about that today also and then we talked about uh, conversion and onboarding Think about payment methods, invoicing, especially in B2B, that's an issue. Uh, guarantees, um, return policies, uh, pricing, uh, terms and conditions, security standards, uh, member organizations, uh, your G GDPR processing agreement is a thing to consider, especially if you buy high-end or high-end uh, Larger comp corporations, say 50 uh, people plus, uh, your processing agreement will be 
something that will be discussed when you're, once you're uh, uh, in their core process of uh, uh, processing uh, data of persons and you're selling to the EU. EU. Um, onboarding, a lot of content. Help them to point out uh, where they can find issues. Uh, tell them what uh, your best in class users do. Uh, help them any way they can. And we will talk about that more tomorrow. So it's a little bit uh, an overarching uh, uh, theme, customer success, onboarding, retention. It's, it's more or less not, not the same, but closely related. Marketing automation flows. So, so we're going to start customer success. Definition, customer success versus customer support, strategy, KPIs, example of a dashboard, net promoter score, and where do you start with your customer success activities? Uh, because a lot of will be more framework of how to think about customer success and, of course, um, selling your first uh, products or the first few uh, products um, is quite uh, another phase. But well, customer success is a long-term scientifically engineered and professional directed business strategy for maximizing customer and company sustainable proven profitability. And that uh, source uh, of this definition was the Customer Success Association. Uh, for me, it's put simple. Do your customers get the desired outcome by using your product? And the desired outcome is not always obvious. Uh, if you have a simple or simple, but um, say something that um, solves a core one simple prob uh, problem, uh, like a, a calendar app, um, well, you can also discuss if that's simple, but uh, it's easy what their uh, outcome they want to manage their ca calendar easy integrations with other tools uh, hooks when they use another tool they can uh, get the data in their main calendar app uh, that's kind of features um, and uh, you can uh, measure if they get the desired outcome, if they use it at least, say, every two days, but probably if it's a little bit of a busy person, uh, several times a day. So you can imagine if they download your calendar app, they uh, use it intensively the first one, two, three days, but then uh, they uh, don't log in anymore after, uh, say, a week, and then after a month, well, you can forget about it. Then. Uh, you lost them, and that's one of your churn uh, chances or churn probabilities. So uh, desired outcome can be difficult, especially if you um, sell high-end or more complex products, uh, CRMs or even more complex products. Um, what exactly the desired outcome is can be um, a little bit vague. Other personas in the uh, decision-making unit will give you other answers. That's their agenda. Um, but maybe they also don't know um, themselves what they really need or want. It's also your task as a customer success manager in that role um, to manage that process and um, to also to activate uh, latent uh, uh, processes or opportunities or features of your product to the customer. So like uh, we have similar customers to you and they found it beneficial for them to use da 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 da, da etc. So uh, it's important uh, thing to get the desired outcome uh, uh, clear. On the right here, an image um, about how this customer success thing works for your uh, for your business model. So um, we talked about the first value, the successful trial. Then we get the onboarding process, deployment. If your acquisition process is uh, is working, you will increase users. Um, if you have uh, you deliver desired outcomes, then you will have customer success and you will increase usage and 
you go upsell and cross sell. That's all the best case scenarios. And all the worst case scenarios is they don't get the desired outcome for one or the other reason. They will churn. So um, this is actually the, well, um, if you have a good acquisition process in order, this is your most uh, important process to manage uh, your product. What's the difference between uh, customer success and uh, support? Uh, well, support will always be a little bit stressy. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if your company uh, grows uh, in size or uh, say from three people to uh, uh, anything to uh, 100 people, support will mostly be uh, uh, people who are having problems now need to be solved now. They're on a chat or on the phone or other uh, direct instance messages. So. Um, that's not really the good atmosphere to think about strategically about, hey, um, are we solving the problems? Of course, you want to have a, a kind of CRM in, uh, in place to track all the issues your customers are uh, having with issue uh, solving uh, using your product. Um, but the culture is really different in a support department. Um, of course, you are reactive. KPIs will mostly be a uh, number of cases, uh, how fast the cases are solved, like in the minutes or days, they're open. Uh, first uh, contact resolutions is uh, for call centers is, uh, is an important metric, but you can also that have, uh, have that metric with chat sessions. Um, and most uh, entrepreneurs slash managers have the, um, let's say, the, the urge, to uh, look at it from a cost center uh, uh, way. And of course, you have to manage costs and efficiency. Um, but it's more a source of uh, customer feedback than anything else. Um, of course, alert to problems. Uh, customers are experiences. Um, and you have a lot of technical supports and the knowledge uh, uh, support. On the other hand, if you have uh, more focus on customer success or a customer success manager or a customer success team in place, um, you're more, more in a proactive role like, hey, uh, how do we make sure that this customer or this user gets uh, the value out of our product that they expect or that they need or that they want? Um, and uh, that's by guiding them through the, in the right way through your app, um, using the tricks like uh, uh, routes or um, uh, uh, videos or uh, how tos, etc. Like we talked about in on the in the on onboarding or in the framework of content, can be live events, webinars every week uh, for new customers and uh, and onboarding. Um, uh, uh, live talk, um, etc., or have an interview with a really heavy user who really uh, uses your product a long time. Like, hey, how do you use it? What have, are your best tricks and advices for uh, best practices for other users who are watching, etc. Um, so your focus is more on, um, of course, the end is retention, um, but what's not um, on usage. And um, if you're able to measure it, both quantitatively as qualitatively, uh, uh, the desired outcome. Um, that, that's where your focus will be on, and uh, customer success is really a revenue and growth center. Also, focus on opportunities like. Uh, um, because uh, we also will talk about products uh, like users that don't have a fit with your product uh, because of they're too small or um, they have certain integrations not in place or, or are not available or they don't want to pay uh, the right amount, etc. All kind of things where they don't are a fit. If you're going to focus on that customers, uh, you're losing the opportunities with the customers that uh, have a fit with your company and your product. So. Um, and if you manage the process correctly, then you can help them better and sell them more and sell them longer. Um, 
customer experience, this mega, mega uh, broad KPI and that um, uh, well, initiates, initiates all other activities, uh, upsell, cross-sell, and uh, uh, in my opinion, adoption of your product, usage, uh, depth, depth of the adoption. Um, like if your product evolves over time and you have uh, uh, several features and uh, uh, you want to uh, check hey, how much of those features are using, uh, are they using? Should they be using uh, and are not using yet? And can we help them using it? Don't they know it? Don't they have the time to set it up? Or because uh, more uh, usage and adoption, of course, is more buy-in slash lock-in. Customer success strategy, uh, what to think about planning people process and uh, performance conditions, uh, planning, think about custom segments. Um, so uh, current uh, uh, revenue from uh, those custom, those segments, but also uh, uh, potential customers. I mean, if you have a 500 billion company company using your product, uh, probably uh, they will start with a low, uh, low plan or low usage, but uh, the potential uh, is big. Operating plan for uh, 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 setting up your customer uh, success strategy, revenue and budget. You need uh, investments in uh, your tech stack, people, content, um, uh, building flows, etc. Uh, customer lifecycle management, you have to have an idea about, hey, how are they moving through the product at this stage and why in a more, uh, uh, let's say, more adult company, um, you will have other questions, of course, of your life cycle because you have data uh, where you can base your decisions on. Uh, in really early stage, you have to just take your best guess with your um, uh, mind, of course, and, and, uh, and intuition, but um, you don't have data about what the life cycles actually are. Um, people, what kind of team uh, walls do you need? Uh, how does it fit in the design for feedback loops um, uh, to, to product development or other departments that are working with customers? Uh, compensation and quota design. So of course, if, if your salespeople work on a quota to uh, get in sales, but uh, they get in uh, messy clients that are difficult to manage for customer success or to develop them to successful customers, uh, you can have an issue. So it's really uh, organizing your company towards customer success. Uh, it's a really cross channel, cross department uh, effort. Um, channel success, of, uh, of course, is a, a way to look at it. Um, process onboarding ahead of value creation and communication. Um, I think that's the, the core aspect for uh, the customer slash user. Um, here you have, uh, depending on what, 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 what kind of product and to which segments uh, you, have, you use a, a lot of marketing automation to proactively or reactively uh, point them out to certain content uh, or usage features. Um, but if you really sell high market, uh, of course, you need other kinds of communication because uh, they expect uh, a more personal approach. Opportunity management, so you don't uh, uh, lose sight of opportunities, sales opportunities, cross sell, upsell, etc. Uh, have an advocacy process in place. We're going to talk about that Monday. Uh, performance conditions. Enablement, operations, tech stack. I think uh, we speak from ourselves. Custom success program, implementation ongoing. A lot of the issues are, of course, content related. So what's not content related or not in the core content 
email, inbound email, just sessions, um, and um, inbound telephone or video calls. Uh, uh, all the other things, help centers, uh, forward of users, um, video centers, blogs, white papers, downloads, whatever you want to call it, it's all uh, content to support uh, uh, your product. Of course, you can have different levels of content we talked about, like uh, uh, trends in the industry. Um, uh, but for most, you need the content to, uh, to uh, explain them how to use your product. Uh, and you can, content can be feature-based, but also, uh, benefit based or use cases like hey uh, for a CRM how can you use SMS marketing in B2B um, yeah, well, taking considerations really intrusive etc but when will be it appropriate um, if they want something now like a, a new lead is coming in they want a, an SMS uh, verification with an email address so they can call right away wherever they are if they are at dinner with their uh, a family on a uh, Friday night, uh, but uh, a really important lead comes in from uh, the other side of the world. You want to make the call. Um, so you need to help your customer uh, getting value out of the product. They won't do it themselves mostly. What KPIs to focus on? Um, portfolio growth. So that's more net growth. Um, in monthly recurring revenue terms, so expansions plus upgrades plus renewals minus downgrades, contractions, and churn. Um, retention rate to focus on. So that's more a cohort uh, uh, metric, like uh, from a cohort, uh, what how many people stay, um, instance of value. You can uh, see it in the sense of accounts, number of accounts. Um, referrals uh, can be a really customer success KPI because uh, we talk about it in a few minutes, but uh, net promoter score, if you have such a metric or such a process in place, uh, well, they will show out if there are any promoters uh, within your customer base and which they are, and probably they will promote you. Um, Personally, I like increase in product adoption, uh, adoption a lot. Um, it's really a trustworthy uh, indicator based on behavior uh, if they're doing anything with your product. Because if you do have heavy users, users of your product, and they uh, do what you expect from successful customers that they do, uh, and they uh, do churn, well, you, you have a, a big problem on your hands. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, lower number of support tickets, really important because uh, people cost money, people on the payroll. Uh, so uh, in general, uh, besides having a successful product, you want to have at least uh, the least uh, possible people answering emails, having chat windows open and uh, being on the phone reactively. Proactively, of course, is a different uh, different case, different scenario. Um, faster onboarding, you will get better at it. So uh, that's also a metric. Uh, when you get volume uh, running for your business, um, and your product is more or less standardized. So if you have a high-end SaaS product, uh, that's different because uh, every uh, onboarding process will be uh, different depending on the customer. But if you have a more standardized product, mid market, low market, um, you can really estimate how long, or you know, you can measure how long an onboarding uh, costs and uh, you are getting better at, at it. Um, number of monthly onboarding finished use of key features etc um, 
So time per onboarding and the number of onboarding, so but they're closely related. And product stickiness. Um, yeah, what's the difference with five? You would say increase in product adoption. Um, more the fun part of it. Uh, like interesting, um, educational, etc. The best example I could find from uh, a customer success dashboard, and um, there are uh, always a lot of dashboards available uh, in the world. Um, But I thought well, this was interesting to take a look at. So my special attention goes to the lower bar from the green uh, summary part on. Uh, and to the right, you see calendar, opportunities, renewals, tasks, notes, support tickets, usage, net promoter score, and contacts. And um, per tab, there will be a kind of uh, deeper, um, uh, uh, let's say, Drill down somewhere. Um, but this is actually what you need to measure to uh, measure your customer success process. Um, and on the top right, you see industry drop down, stage drop down, type drop down. So you can uh, 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 drill down. That was the word I was looking for. Drill down uh, in segments or verticals, etc. Of course, the issue with uh, uh, setting up this kind of tool, I mean, I don't, I've never worked with Stridec, uh, so, uh, um, is creating first all the measurements, uh, so integrating it in your product, and secondly, uh, getting a place, uh, product, uh, process in place, uh, where you keep integrating it in your product. Uh, because you will release new features, update your uh, uh, product, and um, this measurement always have to uh, be integrated. Same with uh, Google Analytics. Uh, you always uh, have, if you have a new feature on your website, measurements have to be uh, created because else you can't measure. Same with this uh, kind of tooling. It's a lot of event-based uh, uh, besides the messaging, tooling, etc., but um, measuring your product usage is mostly an event-based. So, like in Google Analytics, events, event-based uh, thing, um, and then you define it from hey, this event is from that stage, and you have to tie it all together. Um, but in the end, you get the dashboard, something like this, and this is where you, your customer success manager or your customer success team, will work from on a day-to-day -day basis. Net Promoter Score. A lot of businesses use this. Um, actually, it's a loyalty metric. It's I, I believe it's from Bain and Company, if I'm not uh, correct, the model uh, originally. Um, it's adopted through uh, the entire marketing industry. Um, the main goal is like uh, you have uses that uh, uh, that you deliver what they expect and uh, they give you an, a, a number or a grade of seven to eight um, and if people ask them like hey what are you using or they have a conversation about uh, uh, your product uh, segment they will say oh okay we use this this product and we're happy about it so Let's say passively promoters. Uh, actively promoters are uh, uh, people who uh, give you an elbow, like, hey, wake up. You really should use, start using that product because uh, it's amazing. Uh, for me, a personal, uh, really easy uh, to remember thing was when, uh, when Google came on the market. I think it was 98 or something, 97. Uh, in front of myself, uh, Alta Vista, Yahoo, you know, the messy, uh, messy uh, uh, search engine uh, compared to uh, Google. Um, it was like it was fast, 
it got good results and uh, it was simple in usage. So, um, you know, how for all this work. Um, and then you have detractors. Detractors are people that are not that positive about you to other people. They're uh, on high risk of churning. Um, and if they have to use your product because uh, there's nothing else uh, as cheap in the market or that kind of reasons, they uh, they won't bring in any other customers. So that's promoter score. Um, it's mostly presented as one score. Uh, but it's it's um, a weight pro, uh, weighted weighted uh, a process like um, you see the company who integrated ask at different moments they ask like hey uh, how would you rate this how would you rate it like it's not a one time so it's for several touch points and also in time it can change um, what can you do with the metric uh, you can uh, uh, expect something uh, so it's a predictor um, of churn and uh, of advocacy, say uh, referrals and other organic organic growth. Um, I'm not personally, but it's really personal opinion, not a big fan of because it's not behaved on be uh, behavior, but on surveys. Uh, alternatives where you can uh, uh, take a look at it, uh, customer lifetime value. Um, Repurchase ratio and uh, upsell ratio, they're really behavior based and they uh, they uh, are a good indicator um, if people love your product. So if you start relying on a net promoter score benchmark and monitor them continuously against behavior based metrics like average review on review sites or any app store within the app, branded search. Uh, so it would be strange if you got more and more and more and more uh, better reviews, but uh, besides campaign uh, periods, uh, your branded search will, would go down. That would be uh, something to scratch your head and think about really carefully about it. Uh, same for your churn metrics. Um, good MPS score um, and uh, high churn metrics that, that, that they don't match. Uh, so in time, you want to the uh, well, average review. You have to uh, pick uh, one or two uh, review sites that you're going to monitor. It's say once a month or once a quarter, depending on how many reviews you got. Um, in general, you have to review it anyway because if people leave your reviews over there on external websites, um, you can learn from it because it's a, it's a customer feedback. Um, But I would track this three uh, metrics against my NPS score uh, because they should uh, behave uh, alongside each other. Uh, but if they uh, are really uh, out of bounds or at once or continuously, then you can learn something from it. So where to start? Um, well, it's the, first the hard work. I think you uh, should provide as much content you can uh, create uh, to customers to need uh, that need to help themselves and to point them out to um, you have to measure uh, interactions with your product. We talked about that. Define and redefine what getting value out of your product means for your customers. And define and redefine what early warning indicators are for customers not getting value out of your product because uh, it will change over time. Then, and otherwise, the customer changes. Like if you have, uh, say, fast growing startups uh, as a customer base, uh, they need other things, uh, say, the first 12 months, then they need from uh, month 13 to say month 36 so uh your customer change uh, so uh and your features change product and customer change um
And same with the marketing automation sequences that you have with, um, with acquisition. You engage with the customers to point them out to interesting content and to keep you up to date about what you're doing and what, what the features of your product are. And to teach them about how they can use your product, then uh, on the other hand, how you can deliver value. So email is the carrier of the message, but the message itself is the content on your website. The same is it for uh, customer success. So um, back to the SMS example for a CRM, um, you're not going to explain all the way down to in detail with pre screen screenshots how they can activate the, C, uh, the SMS feature in the CRM. You're going to point them out by email uh, what's the benefit, uh, maybe a small example of two or three sentences, and then a button, click here if you want to learn more, which point them out to a uh, part of your website content. Um, but you, uh, you're staying lo loyal customers, but you can sell to them. Of course, you can sell more to them, upsell and cross-sell, more often, say, in more length, frequency, uh, less cost-intensive, so you will learn efficiency and efficacy more customers without the acquisition costs, of course. Um, so, and with the rows about what you can sell, about your uh, to your customer um, is of course the 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 the, the, the row items are obvious um, but it's more like you have to have a process in place and think about it when and what you're going to offer them and what the trigger will be so it's not obvious that you can sell them more up some cross up but when for what reason and what moment and when not so it's really a, a difficult process, or difficult but tedious. Um, and once proven, volumes kick in, automated. See marketing automation. That was this session.